Okay, good morning, everybody. I'd like to call to order the regular workshop, uh, board workshop meeting for April 16th here at 931 uh, here in Marks Hall. Um, Rod, would you give us the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance, please? Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come before you in this board meeting, acknowledging your sovereignty over all things. We humbly seek your guidance as we deliberate on matters of great importance for this park. Grant us the wisdom to make sound decisions that reflect your values and principles. Amen. 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 I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, could we have the roll call, please? Sure. Lori Dalton here. Dottie Deerwester. Present. Kathy Gregory. Present. Todd Lombardi. Present. Russell McAllister. Present. Louie Nichols. Present. Cindy O'Brien. Present. Rod Smith. Present. Dwayne Trotter. Present. Lee Morris. Present. Okay, we'll jump right into public comment. And uh, just a reminder that it's limited to three minutes and for the uh, workshop topics only. Do I have any public comment? Do I have anybody on Zoom? No. There was one. Do I have anybody on Zoom that would like to make a public comment? Nobody on? Hearing none, I'll close public comment. Hmm. And we'll jump into the uh, re reports for the standing committee. Uh, Treasure Barn? Barb Sewell, 6608 Dakota Street. Um, since your last meeting on the 2nd, we've made $2,659, and our total for the balance is $45,680.36. And that's all I got. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, jump into the uh, clubs and organizations. Ooh, I'm liking this. <laughs> Do I have anybody on Zoom that would make a, uh, clubs and organizations? Nobody on? Hearing none, I'll close uh, clubs and organizations. And uh, we'll jump into the workshop agenda items. Are there any items that we need to add in emergencies? Hearing none. Uh, the first one we have is the reword PP3. Uh, I included a copy of the... Uh, policy and we no longer do telephone call-ins is basically mm -hmm. for zoom uh all i'd really like to do is uh, replace the word zoom i'm sorry replace the word phone and replace it with zoom and uh the last sentence of the first paragraph is i just added uh, uh put a comma after illness medical conditions and or uh, seasonal residency. In the second paragraph, again, I just replaced the word phone and uh, must provide, I'm sorry, must notify the chair or park manager prior to the meeting to ensure a quorum is established. And I think we can almost take that the rest of the uh, whole paragraph out of there. Dwayne, I have a question. Sure. The third paragraph begins in order for the Board of Trustees. Mm -hmm. was the second line, our trustees participating by phone, should that be by Zoom or through Zoom? Um, yes, I'm sorry. Okay. I missed, that. I missed okay. that one. I'm not sure if it's by Zoom or through Zoom or just Zoom. Be a Zoom. Yeah. Be a Zoom. Okay. Something Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I have a question. Uh huh. Sometimes people cannot access Zoom depending on where they are. Um, some of the phones are not as good, uh, they, and they do make the phone calls. This would prohibit them from being able to be part of the uh, meeting by phone if that's their only option? Yep. yep. We don't have a whole phone set up anymore. That's all been deleted. Zoom, they can't I, just call Zoom in. is accessed either via computer or phone. Or from. So Zoom covers both. Okay, so they would still be able to do that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Are you ready for the comments yet? Uh, <laughs> then jumping over to the uh, second page uh, under the uh, regular meetings, uh, all I did was add the uh, comment then uh, on any topic for the regular board meetings. And then the workshop meetings is um, the second sentence I just replaced after the roll call instead of at the end of the meeting because it's been switched. And then it's limited to uh, three minutes and restricted only to those topics being discussed at the workshop. And that that state, no, I'm sorry? Should that state uh, board meeting instead of regular meeting? Right now, um, deal. Yeah, it, that's fine with me. Uh, Where are we at? Uh, uh, the very first paragraph right. it says regular meetings. I guess I could say regular board meetings. Yeah. Maybe I should say board meetings in the case I have a special. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I was thinking. How do you want it? How do you want it stated? Just uh, board meetings. District in, board meetings to just scratch regular. Yeah, just scratch out regular and put board meetings. No, it already says district board. So <clears throat> district board meetings. You want it to say district board board meetings? The heading up. No, no, the heading. The heading, I'm sorry. Uh, just up here. Uh, okay. It's regular, regular board meeting. Yeah, just scratch out regular and just put board. board meetings. Okay, gotcha. But then in the paragraph. Just get rid of regular. Get rid of the word regular? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I was down there. That's good. Okay. Uh, then this, I've already covered that one. Uh, paragraph three was fine for the interactives. Um, and then the word starts off with paragraph one is, I'm sorry, uh, number one, uh, individual making comments comes to the podium and provides uh, name and address. Do we, you know, last board meeting, uh, Dottie said the computer club is buying a mic for use in here. Do we want to include that? Or they just, I mean, say to the effect that they have to, come to a microphone and state they're not not necessarily to the podium or do you want them to come to the podium to make their comments well i'm going to come but, to the podium so they show up on camera yeah that's oh, okay uh, all right gotcha uh, the microphone that uh, the computer club is is that for other type of meetings so whatever, they don't have to come whatever is needed whatever meetings are held okay it's going to be available to the park okay uh, it's just a matter there wasn't one in here um, I have a question about the restriction. I understand the three-minute rule, and I understand uh, on the agenda or not on the agenda, but it seems to me it should be reversed. It seems to me, comments have been made to me, why can't we bring up topics during the workshop when that's the time that things are brought up and discussed and whatever, and then on the main meeting, on the regular meeting, keep that to only agenda items. So it seems to me it should be reversed allow people to bring up whatever topics they want to within the time limit at the workshop. Uh, doesn't mean they're going to be discussed or anything like that, and then limit the regular meeting to only what's on the agenda. No, see, I, I, I see it just the opposite is when you're getting to the workshop, they actually have the uh, uh, agenda. But they have the agenda and they, they actually get to voice their concerns or comments on what is about to be voted on if it's the opposite they don't vote in the workshop no but, but they can uh, they can make all their comments and stuff that on the workshop item then when it comes to the board meeting uh those i'm sorry yeah to the board meetings those comments would be considered to either approve or, or they could make more comments well or, my point yeah. is could they could make additional comment i mean my point is that it seems to be more appropriate for the workshop to bring up issues and topics, whether they're on the agenda or not, and whether or not they're going to be discussed or because we don't discuss them normally. And that's appropriate, more appropriate at the workshop than it is at the regular meeting. It, I just I, wanted to I, raise I don't, that. I, I, I don't think I, it I would don't. matter because the the topics are already set before mm -hmm. we we before we open for public comment on the meeting. For the for the for the workshop. Um, no, I understand that. I'm just saying to bring up additional items. Some co residents have made comments to me about they have to wait through the whole, the, the longest part of our whole meeting is the workshop. Mm -hmm. So if we have two hours of workshop because we have wonderful things to discuss, 
and the, and they have to wait the two hours before they can bring anything else up that's not listed. It seems to me they should be able to make their comments, go away if that's what they want to do, and not have to wait two hours or whatever. So it just seems the opportunity is should be reversed. So you want them to add to our workshop no. with their concerns? No. Not to the, not to the, no, no it's the no, public. It's, it's limited to the three, I'm right. sorry, limited to the agenda items it's only. The, and right, she's saying it should comment. be in a topic. That and I, like I don't agree with that. Well, they can part. skate in, have their say, and then skate out. See, I don't, right. I don't agree with that, but Mr. Mm -hmm. Morris. So, it, it, and this is just an aside, mm -hmm. uh, in, under Robert's rules of orders, what the, the process or the idea behind that was, is that, um, being able to discuss anything uh, in a uh, board meeting is uh, to give you uh, uh, pause when you're voting on something in that immediate uh, in that immediate moment. But at the workshop, to be able to discuss items that are on the workshop agenda uh, gives you forewarning that there may be something to think about in the way that you do uh, cast your vote in the in the mm -hmm. board meeting following. It, Sometimes it, there's not enough time to reflect on it, to think through it, because you're moving through the workshop or the uh, board meeting agenda. That was the thought process under Robert's Rules of Order. Part of part of the intent of residents coming and making comments is to be able to make comments about anything about the park. It doesn't have to be on the agenda. It's not going to be discussed. Um, it could be on a future agenda if it's a topic that's important to do that. But they can bring anything forward, whether it's on the agenda or not. And I just think that's more appropriate time. Well, and the board meeting used to be at the beginning, so they were able to do it right at the beginning. So um, yeah. I've had the same comments from some residents. But I have an email. If they want to abuse me and send me an email, I'll bring it up in the meeting. That was going to be my comment. Uh, was they should, If it's something that's that important that needs to be discussed, then they should you know, approach one of us and convince us to get it onto the meeting. Surely it'd be a lot easier, and then you could have a one-on-one -on -one instead of all of us having exactly. to change our minds or decide things at that time. I mean, I get emails all the time, so and I have to answer those questions. Well, um, it, my, my approach is a bit different. When people come to me, first of all, I like seeing people in the audience. I like having residents come to the microphone and say their piece. I don't necessarily feel that the only, and I know, realize it's not the only way, but if, if the intent is the main way for them to get topics heard is to do it through email. Personally, I would rather they don't do it that way is the main way. I'd rather see them here, interact, meet the board. Just, I just think that's a more friendly way of doing it. It also raises the topic to the level of other people hearing it. Because typically, if one person has one issue, there's going to be more. They're just not verbal about it. So I, I'm just making the, my opinion. Well, and to look at it the other way, if they have something real important they want us to hear, they could sit through the workshop and then be here for the beginning of the board meeting, too, if it's that important for them. Yep. Yeah. That, that's so my point. It, it'd be, we do yeah. it twice a month. Or they could watch on TV, then run over. Or part of you. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm looking at it both ways. I understand your point, but what I think I'm going to still do is leave the agenda uh, the way it is, that they only have the three minutes at, during the workshop for those workshop items only, and then uh, during the board meeting, then they can't express for any topic. Just raising the issue. Mm -hmm. And then the... Uh, uh, where we at? The last thing. The last thing down there was uh, I took out the public comments for limited because it was already addressed up in the uh, second paragraph. Another question. Yeah. How do people in the audience know that the topic is interactive? I mean, because in the past, um, there's been a question up here for whatever. Usually, a trustee says it's interactive. Or they want, or they've been asked to have it be interactive. We have a lot of new people in the park, and they may or may not ever have been to a meeting or have been part of the interactive process. How would they know? Is it going to be announced ahead of time that all workshop topics are interactive? How do they know 
they it, can get up, just get up you know, and come to the podium. You know, it says it in the middle of the paragraph. It says to determine whether a workshop is an interactive, a board member must ask the chair to, at the beginning of the topic for a vote of the board to allow interactive discussion. Okay, so that's the way they would do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I missed that. I, have a, I don't think, think we've ever known ahead of time whether yeah. they're going to be interactted. I mean, if they can all, as, yeah. as needed. It depends on the subject yeah. of what yeah. comes up. And if we suspect someone has information that's valuable, we mm -hmm. invite them in. You know, I apologize because that's when I got a little crazy the other day because I didn't understand when it could be interactive and not. So mm -hmm. I appreciate that, knowing that too, because it's kind of a basic thing you guys know that. that well, it's just the education of the paperwork. Yeah, that's all it is. Just reading, yeah. darn it. <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> just just learning as we go. I have a few things. Go ahead. On the on the first page, my microphone on. I don't didn't sound like, oh. like it. Uh, there no, there okay, you go. there it is. All right, maybe it's just positional. Okay. Um, <clears> on <throat> the first page in the first paragraph, where you added or seasonal residency. Mm -hmm. That's redundant because if you look, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, the sixth line down already addresses seasonal nature of the residency of the, in the district. Okay. So I don't think we need to add that. Agreed? Yep. Okay. That doesn't matter. Okay. Is there a definition of seasonal? Like, when does, is there, when does it change from short term, your rental? Change from short term to seasonal. Well, we're talking about board, no, members. board members. I know, but, but and we own, so yep. we're not. Yeah. Okay. You know. Yeah. Okay. Trustees have but to be owners. Yeah. Seasonal. It just means that you're not here twelve months. Okay. I don't think we've ever defined. You know, well, you're here eleven months, or you're seasonal if you're here at least ten months. You know, not ten months or whatever. I, I understand. Okay. All right. Then on the next page, <clears throat> I'm sorry, under the interactive workshops, number one, um, we're, if we change number one to comes to the podium, that um, doesn't work because uh, number two says at the end of the topic, um, the chair recognizes the member of the public and asks them to give their comments or questions. So, um, if they want to make a comment, they need to raise their hand out in the audience. So we've got three hands raised. Okay. Then at the end of the topic, you acknowledge one, they come up to the board, they come up to the podium. Then they go sit down and then you acknowledge the next one. They come up. Sorry, I'm poking you in the face. I don't mean to do that. Okay, I'm used to it. <laughs> I was getting ready to break your red mustache. Um, anyway, so the process, this doesn't come into the podium isn't the number one step. Um it, it maybe needs to be at the end of number two. Or just move number two up. Yeah. And make number one, two. Well. At the end of the topic. Uh, the chair recognizes the member of the public. It doesn't address yeah. the multiples. So it's still, if the individual is interested in making a comment, raise your hand. And then at the end of the topic, um, discussion the board's discussion then you recognize the members of the audience and have them come up to give their comment or question and we can add you know provide their name and address or not every time we have them come up to the podium we expect that but maybe we need to put it in writing um lori did this is only a suggestion but instead of having one and one and two meld them together so at the end of a topic of meeting of board and the chair recognized a member of the public and asked them to come give their comments or question at the podium. Okay, but how does the public, there's nothing that says how the public gets recognized. But, but do we have to say that? Isn't I don't know. Given that, to everything, that else. everything else we do, we, we recognize when somebody else. comes up? I think uh, that's kind of redundant. Yeah. I mean, it's. I think it's kind of a given that Everybody is recognized have a at the podium, I mean, like we do for public comment. Yeah, I mean it's not so, really a thing that. Single. All right, you didn't so, come up. So what we're what we're saying, and I'm thinking I'm hearing this as as the the mm -hmm. the the probable end is, get rid of one. 
and leave number two would become one all the way down. Um, at the end of the topic, the chair recognizes. Man, it probably uh, ask them. So, so you only rec you recognize in them. Ask them to come give their comment or question at the podium. At the podium. At the podium. Okay, you're already recognizing them, so it's the same thing. Yep. As anything else, That's I right. recognize so, you. I recognize David. Da, 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 da. So we're we're <laughs> taking out the the rec we're scratching one completely. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then we're adding at the end of number two at the podium. Mm -hmm. That works. Mm -hmm. Okay. That that would work. All Isn't right. Part of the interactive to be able to talk back and forth with people. Mm -hmm. So why why are we waiting till the end of the topic to recognize them? The board gets first bite at the apple. Right. Okay. Well, okay. After the initial After discussion, the then we open it up then for any comments, and then we can come back and discuss. We can, we okay. can, and we can discuss with the person at the podium. Sure. Because okay. it's interactive. Yeah, that makes it's sense. not a one way street. They come up, yeah. but the, the thought process in my mind is the, is the board gets first bite at the apple. I, I kind of agree with what Rod's saying. I don't think it necessarily at the end of the topic, because a typical interactive thing is. Just take an example, the sunshades at the Vachi court. So we're talking about it, and then we're like, well, how big are they? Well, the guy from the Vachi court's there right in the middle. We typically yeah. would say, we make this interactive, how big are they? You know, right. it's, it comes in the middle quite often. Yeah, that's the way it's been in the most, mm -hmm. most yeah. of the times I've been involved in. Then maybe change the word end to appropriate time. Or, at the appropriate time. At the convenient. As needed. As okay, <clears throat> there's a lawyer term <laughs> <laughs> as needed. Well, something to the effect during the discussion, the chair can recognize a member of the audience. Yeah. We can just something say of that nature during the topic. Yeah, instead of at the how how are we going to fix that sentence completely? We're, all right, I get un, during. I just say take out at on number two there, which is going to be number one. I'd say during the board discussion, the chair recognizes yada yada yada. During the board discussion, I would add the word "may." The chair may recognize. May and shall are two great words. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Chair, um, yes. Trustee Dalton, we probably also should put a period for where it says interactive workshop. And uh, the uh, first sentence, there should be a period after at the time the topic is discussed and then crossing off or is offered at the end of each topic. All right. I'm I'm not with you. Where are you on the sheet? Interactive workshop. Inter interactive workshop. Got third, it. Third paragraph. First sentence. Third paragraph. Wait. There is no third. It says during some no, topics. Third. Starts with during. During some topics. Okay. The board recognizes the value of interactive workshops in which public comment is provided at the time the topic is discussed. Period. All right. During. Okay. It's not in the line which. It's not in the line the. Member, allow, work, request, work, where is it? Discussion. Where is it? Right here by the mm -hmm. discussion. Line wit. Starts discussion with which. Period. Okay. That's all I needed was second line down to the right. Let me have okay. a red pen. <laughs> <laughs> Number right. three, right? All, all this. So. <laughs> all right. So we we put a period there. And then is or the beginning of the next sentence? No, that's no, take, no. Take, it take it out. Take it out. Take it out. Take it out or. Take out take the rest the of the sentence. Take out the rest of it. Yep. Okay. Gotcha. I see. And then thank you. That's why it was confusing. One point of clarification: go. interactive discussions with staff are not required to be voted on. Just so we're all on right. understanding. Right. Okay. With staff. With staff. With with, with me. With uh, uh, any member with of right. staff. Yeah. Is not required to be interactive. You can yeah. ask your maintenance foreman. You can ask your park manager a question, obviously, at any time without going interactive. Oh. Oh. Okay. So on that on that sentence, during some topics, the board recognizes the value of interactive workshops in which public comment may be provided. 
at the time of the topic is discussed, period. Right? What? Maybe. She's just repeating the second not sentence is. of the same paragraph. Same paragraph. First sentence. Lost again. Find me. Workshop in which public may be. Is that what you're saying? Yes. May so be. She's not. adding words that aren't Replace. here, and I can't figure out where to add them. Yeah. That's, what, that's what I'm asking. That's, that's what she was just telling that's me. That's why I read it. Is replace is with maybe. Yeah. I, maybe I've scratched. May, maybe provided comments may be provided instead of is provided. Gotcha. Thank you. I mm -hmm. just needed to find where we were at. I'd make a comment about my pea brain, but I won't. Okay. Any other discussion? <laughs> Go ahead, copy we, that. We'll copy this one, up. one last thing. I'm sorry that did this on the first page, uh, trustee participation. Uh, at the uh, third paragraph, it says, in order for the board to transact business, a quorum of board members must be physically present. However, trustees participating by phone pursuant to this policy shall be permitted to vote on all matters coming before the board. Do we need to add in there uh, once a quorum is established? Or is that specific enough in the rest of the sentence that we need to have a quorum in order to you have have vote have, on things? Oh, you have to have a well, quorum. If you don't have a quorum, you're not going to have a board. I, I agree. I just want to make sure that we're... Even though they're on Zoom. Zoom. Yeah. Well, I think it's pretty well clear. It says a quorum yeah. of the board members yeah. must be physically present. Mm -hmm. yeah, I agree. But right. I thought you had to. Keep, you could be by Zoom, too. No. But no, we no. We're not if part of the quorum. Have, if I really? don't have five here... You have to have a quorum here. Then I... Yeah, we could, I mean, we could still have a board meeting without a quorum, but yeah. we couldn't take any. We could have a workshop, we could have a workshop, but, not but we could not have a board meeting. Right. Correct. And the only reason we can vote by via phone or Zoom is because there's a quorum sitting here in the hall. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Any other discussion? I think we probably will beat that one up. Clear as mud. <laughs> Oh, she's my blood. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the next item we have is the uh, guest pass procedure update, Mr. Morris. Uh, there was a handout uh, to uh, everybody. The guest pass is updated version number two. I'm going to send around the uh, uh, versions of the guest cards uh, or guest card resident card and renter card. Um, and I, I took it off to get up. I'm sorry. He does that. I do that. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> All right. I'm going to pass around the uh, guest card, renter card, and uh, and uh, resident card uh, to the board, and then we'll get it out to the audience. Um, wanted to clarify some of the things that we discussed at last uh, meeting about guest uh, passes and the guest pass policy. Um, to try to make it a little bit easier, the existing policy is is written on top, and the new policy that uh, we're recommending is below, and it's underlined. Um, the idea of this whole changing this uh, procedure was that we would like to stop um, the guests from using the residence fob uh, to gain access to the uh, pool to the amenities, uh, because we say in other spots that. Uh, residents can only uh, or residents renters their fobs must only be used by by them personally and not anybody else ever given to anybody else. So this would stop that where the uh, fobs are used uh, that are owned by a resident or a renter. What? So the first policy: guests are required to use the resident's personal fob with a guest card is going to be replaced with guests are required to get their own combination guest card fob which is going around uh from the office for the duration of their stay uh, and it has to be less than 30 days per calendar year i have a question on that go ahead the 30 days we talked throughout our different documents 30 and 31 mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. both places which mm -hmm. which are That's we going to use no the i'm sorry go ahead the, the, 30, the 30 days is for the guests. They can't stay more than 30 days. What we were trying to do for the 31 days was the Airbnbs. Minimum, minimum rental Minimum time. rental was 31 oh. days. Mm -hmm. But because there were, 
I'm sorry. Sure. They, they were coming in for a week, two weeks. Okay. We tried to make that a 31 day rental. So that's why it's in. So if they come in places. as a rental, it has to be a, and and try to go through the office. They have to have at least 31 days Correct. on the rental just agreement. A guest, and then it's no, a that that is not a rule. A current rule. True. Just to make sure. Thirty days a, a a guest can be here under age or or anything any age for thirty days or less uh, total during a calendar year. The thirty one days is just a thing that we've discussed in the past, but it is not a current rule. We're we're going to uh, approach that uh, as the next few months go by to uh, uh, to try to change that deed restriction. So they're two different things. Um, when you're done, just plop it here and we can both read. <laughs> it's in the deed restrictions. Yeah. Yeah, let me grab it. So. Can I scribble on that? This. He gave it to us. He handed it off. Yeah, I wanted to make sure I could put it in. The deed restrictions uh, <laughs> say it's actually on your it's on your sheet right here at the very bottom. That's what I thought. A guest of a lot or parcel owner without restriction due to age shall be permitted to stay in a lot or parcel owner's dwelling unit, provided that such stay does not exceed a total of thirty days in any year. And that's what's in the deed restrictions, and that's what we have to follow. Mm -hmm. No. Somewhere <laughs> it, it says 31 days too. Yeah. <laughs> when I rented, I had to I rent for 31 it. days, I thought. No, not in the deed restrictions. The regs. Yeah, they just got we'll, the rules we'll and regs. for it and fix it. Uh, in fact, it's under the rules and regulations, mm -hmm. section one, property owners, paragraph uh, B. B. Yeah, yeah, it's. Yeah, rules and regs. So it's like so. Age so that's a different thing. That that talks about Family. that a, uh, if a person is staying uh, with a property owner, uh, that in order to be uh, a, a a property owner, they must after thirty one days, which is they must uh, qualify with age. Is what the intent of that uh, uh, paragraph is. It's not talking about guests, it's talking about property owners. Provided they meet the age requirements as specified in the amendments and the deed restrictions. And I, I, I'm reading what you're saying, but I don't agree with it. I, uh, to me, I don't even see why it's in there. It, it it is definitely it is definitely convoluted and, and confusing. It makes no sense. I have I have a right to have my sister come and live with me for three months. It's my house. I can have my sister live there. She as long as she's older, as long as she's old enough. Age requirement. But she doesn't. I can't. I don't register as a guest because she's going to be there for three months. I register as a resident. She becomes a resident in my home. This, this tells you it's a family member, so it's giving you a different definition on here that you can have somebody stay as a family member for 31 days or more. Uh, as long as they qualify under age, age. right? and right. filled out the proper forms, which is a PP 26. Yeah, 26, 27. So, so family member is not considered a runner, what it's saying. Right. No. Right. That's what, that's what I said. That's what I'm saying is I, you, you can't know. take that out of there. You, I have every right to have my sister come and stay for three months with me. Right. Guys, we're, but we're, I have, you know, we're, I'm we're digressing. Yeah. We're off track here. I'm sorry. Yeah, just I want to make sure that we kind of compartmentalize this because this, I will tell you that, mm -hmm. um, that this, this whole policy and, and changing it, it's got, tentacles going in, roots going all over the place in our rules and regulations, policies and procedures, deed restrictions. 
And we need to try to make sure that we focus on, on the, uh, on the guest policy itself, and then we can change other stuff as we go forward. But the guest policy is what is what the concern is um, uh, because we have to get it in place before we do the fob changeover, oh, and that's my concern. Mm -hmm. we have a smooth fob changeover. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be uh, a, meaty, a meaty pants. No. <laughs> Lee, I, I have a quick question. When you say the existing policy and then the new policy and all the way through the document, mm -hmm. is there a way you can tell me where the existing policy exists? Or are you just saying in general, because it could be in one and two places? I had a hard time even using the search function, figuring out where uh, these uh, uh, policies are all contained for the guests because they're actually in policy and procedures. They're in rules and regulation. Mm -hmm. um, and they also exist in the deed restriction. The deed restrictions we're really not able to change. Right. Correct. So it leaves then to the rules and regulation. And that's why um, my comment to you earlier today is that I, I want to first do something. This is the, Granted, this is different than what our normal procedure is to change our rules and regulations and policies and procedures. But we need to get the gist of what we're trying to do before we then go and try to change the actual wording, which will be brought back to the board at a later date. We just need to know what direction we're going so that we can make sure that we have our, uh, our ducks in a row prior to the June 3rd for the FOB changeover and what we're requiring and not requiring. All right. I, I just, as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, well, okay, this is great. Where do I fix it? Uh, you know, where am I going? Uh, and so we'll now I understand there. what we're, we'll what I'm up against. Yep. All right. And, I, and I'm going to need your help because it, it's going to take both of us, all of our, you know, uh, you know, our search uh, abilities to try to figure out where all these are, because every time when we think we get the last one, another one pops up somewhere else in a, in a policy that we're not really you know, and this is not anything bad or anything else. It's just, it's just right. 50 years of correct. policy making, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. So moving on to the, uh, to how we, uh, guests may no longer use the residence fob because the, who has the cards? <clears throat> The guest card is a built-in FOB and ID card. Now, one thing that I want to make sure we bring to everyone's attention, there will be no dates written on that card. But there will be uh, the dates that it will be in use that's embedded in the card. And I believe that really the only time that we, we need to be able to. You're coming in and out, Mike. Oh, you got to. Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Come on, Brittany. Yeah. <laughs> it could be because All right, in your better? pocket. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, so there's not going to be any names, or not, excuse me, any names or any dates written on the on the guest cards. So the only place that we absolutely probably need to be able to read that information is in bingo. Is that correct? No. 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 It will be for any park function that requires an office issued ID. Well, I guess, I guess bingo. Bingo. Right. But what I'm saying is, okay, because guests right now are allowed to go to any park function with the guest card. You, you, you're allowed. You use full access. That's how, that's how our rules and regs are written. So they can go to a dance and not pay $7.50. They can go to Showtime and, and pay the 5 bucks like a resident does. It gives full access. So there'll have to be some a reader or some mechanism a fob to gauge that. To get them in. But isn't but but they don't have to pay. That's the whole thing. So you'll have to have a make sure that that is still an active ID. If it's if it's past the thirty days for a guest, am I correct? Mm -hmm. Then they still have it and they're still here. 
they should be denied access and right. entrance. Well, should they be denied access or should they just have to pay the 750? They shouldn't be here. They're no longer a guest. Okay. They've gone That's beyond. Right. Am I correct? That's where I look at it. I agree. So it's just how it is. And this is why the guests have to have their own stuff <laughs> because that way they don't, they can beg and go, they can have full access to the community. That's how it was always meant to be. So if the uh, information is embedded on the card, then those locations would have to have a card reader. Exactly. So the things that bingo would have to have, a, mm -hmm. well, they would have a card reader to get in the door because the door's locked, but they wouldn't have a card reader. They put the guest card, they show the guest card, if there's no name on it, they're not required to show a name on it, just an active card, right? Bingo? Yeah, well, they, they'd need to, like Kylie's saying, you need, you need to have a reader at the beginning of mm -hmm. where they buy the tickets because just because they get into the hall doesn't mean they have a fob that works because they could walk in with somebody else. Right. Right. Correct. So, so there, there needs to be a reader right at like at the beginning of that, and like with Kathy with her dances or yeah. any of the dances or activities, it could be the same. It needs reader. to be at a common location. <laughs> and once and once they pass the like you typically see them when they come in. Once they pass whoever's checking the card, they go to the table. They put their card on the table to show that they they're. They are legitimately right, I believe. They take their card up to get their bingo cards. They don't need to show the reader again because they've been authorized. No, they, well, I would think with with bingo that it would be that you would do the reader when they buy start <clears throat> buying their tickets. Mm -hmm. I thought it was not when they come the in cards, the door. Yeah. Well, we may need to talk about that because that they wouldn't even be there. Yeah. I, mean, I don't want to get into the weeds of this because I think it's more of a procedural. But we do need to have a reader there. And when they come in the door, they shouldn't even get as far as buying cards without having been verified that they can, are eligible to be there. Right. They they get verified before they buy a card. Right. right. That's the process is, right. is someone checks the ID right. first, then they get out their money to buy the first cards. Card right. only. They, right. If they don't make it past the first one, they don't finish down that's, the line. That's what I'm saying. There's not a second reader needed for that. It's just at the initial point. Right. Yeah. We we have we made provisions for a, a reader for bingo, but obviously that reader is portable because it's mm -hmm. probably going to be a tablet with a with a reader attached. The reader is this you know this big, and uh, and it's there to verify that the person uh, is who they are you know on the guest card and that their their stay is still valid. So I'm assuming that we can either buy the relatively low cost. The readers are about ninety dollars. So we can provide more than one reader if we need to at, a, at the dance or anything else or move that one around. But it's not going to be a, a big hardship in order to have a reader at multiple places. Right. So, so the the guest fob, it's not going to say when you read it, it's just going to say go, no go. It's not going to say who the... No, it's going to say it's going to say who it is. It's going to prop up the same information as we see in the office. The valid dates of the... Uh, uh, of the uh, and who the and who the person who the host is but the guest question is? it says one guest card can be used for two people correct so show both their names yes wait you, wait a second you said one guest card for two people and you just said yes it's going to show their names it's a guest card I thought you said they weren't going to have names I'm going to be printed not no. printed on the, on they're, they're, embedded, the they're embedded in the card in other words they were not going to be printed on the card but they'll show up when you scan it oh okay yeah. okay I'm, I, I'm with you we're getting high tech John, so they become reusable yes I mean, number 22 you can use it 20 times and that's the whole idea is that we don't want I, I mean I, I'm seeing people with multiple cards being worn around their neck <laughs> or having cards guest cards yeah that have expired over the years that they've kept and they're starting to get thick stacks. And right. It's, it's a concern that these cards are being used, you know, for whatever purposes, but we want to try to get these cards returned back to the office. Once their once their use is done. For the guest. For the guest. So they're I not mean, floating what? out there. But the bigger thing is, is that, once once card number 22 that's registered to john smith and his uh stay here ended on uh, on april 15th that when he goes to bingo on wednesday night when he scans this card it goes nope 
time up. Right. And then we, and I, I would tend to agree that we turn them away at the door. We don't let them get any further. Right. That's, mm -hmm. that's how we do it. Do it now is. But bingo is the most critical because bingo of all things are, you know, that's involving money, gambling right. and right. state oversight. And you have to state statutes. Mm -hmm. that you exactly. And, 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 our chair is very aware of this, that, yeah. you know, he, he keeps on drilling it into my head is that we have to be very careful that we follow our rules and our policies, you know, as per the, the state requirements, because it would be very, I, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised if there hasn't been someone visiting us already to oversee what, how bingo runs. Right. Um, let's face it. They're always on the corner at the arcade anyways, ready to bust that place. So, <laughs> um, so don't be surprised if you see someone kind of peeking in and looking around, but uh, gambling, you know, is, 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 is very regulated in the state and we have to make sure that we follow our rules. And I just want to ensure that Dottie, since Bingo's following at you and, uh, but Rod, you're there. And I think, uh, uh Lori goes. McNulty is also there, uh, is that those damn ID cards get checked every time we have no exceptions. Uh, there, there are no exceptions. And, and I have I have in the in the past turned a trustee away and they because they had left their ID card in a car that they sent for repairs. Yeah. And I I I had to tell a trustee they couldn't play because they didn't have their ID card. A trustee. Good. I know better. You know, I know them. I know and but still because <laughs> they didn't I'll have it in them. their hand, I, we had to turn them away. We do that. That's that's a given. As long as it's followed. That's what that policy is for. All okay. right. We're moving on here. Um, so the, the other thought about giving uh, one guest card out. So a lot of times when people visit, you know, it's 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 our kids and our, our kids, you know, generally, and I'm being very conventional here, you know, uh, our son and daughter-in-law, our daughter and son-in-law, and our, you know, 2.54 kids uh, <laughs> and everything else, which then, we would issue one guest card to the family. Most of the time, you're not going to go uh, better. Bend it. I think my head's too big. <laughs> Don't answer that. <laughs> <that. laughs> got to come back. <laughs> we try putting the, the earpiece on and then your glasses. So your glasses is on the top of the earpiece now. and hold it down. <laughs> Didn't work. Sorry. There, I got my pocket knife. Let's just cut that ear off and <laughs> tape it to you. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Help me. Oh, I, I thought that was a wireless mic. Nope. <laughs> you will have one at some point. <laughs> you no, know, Dwayne's got a button up here that shuts you on and off. <laughs> All right. Sorry. <laughs> He could always do the Jim McElveen. <laughs> so while you're doing that, I have a question. Um, why are we restricting only one card? Because I could see a situation where somebody's going to go to the pool and somebody else is going to go to another event in the park. They have one card. They can't split themselves and have the card. What, what's the big issue about not giving each of them a card? Well, first of all, the, the thought process is, is that we would... Not on again. Not on again. All right. I'll, I'll just put my hand like this. I'm not bored. I'm just... <laughs> so the, uh, the idea is, is that we're going to charge a $20 deposit for, per guest card and then refund $15 when that card is returned. So there'll be an effective cost of $5, which just covers the cost of us with a card because the cards run about $3 a piece. Um, so we're not saying that they can't have it, but it's unlikely that if that the kids and the, and, and, you know, the grandkids are going to go to separate places. If they're going to go to the pool, they're generally going to the pool. I mean, if, if, uh, if they need another card, we would certainly issue mm -hmm. one under the understanding that there'd be another deposit. So they, it would be an option for them. It's, yeah. it's an option, yeah. and we, we made sure we put that in there. That was one of the big changes exactly. from last meeting to this meeting is that we decided we needed to have that option. Um, and then uh, the uh, 
if there's if there's more people in there, then we need to issue more cards. Which we 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 that tally sheet from last meeting said that the majority, I think, 170 some odd cards were issued Great. to uh, were issued to um, uh, two adults and two kids usually, and uh, there's only probably 20 other instances uh, in the course of a high season where there's more people uh, uh, to deal with. And again, remember your policies are not written in stone either. If we if we have an operational issue, we can always revisit this and change it. But we need to get this uh, in place uh, so that we have a uh, uh, a good procedure uh, when we uh, when we make the changeover. That's June the fifth. That's June the third. Third. And I want to remind everybody that the. Uh, June the 3rd is the day that everything starts for FOB changeover, not any earlier. Um, but uh, And that morning, they're going to disable all the, the whole old FOB system and start taking it apart. And then during later on that day, the new FOB system will start to come online and probably will take a few days for every you know door to be activated and everything else. So there may be some times where there is just the door is open um, no fobs are going to be required for a little while. And then we'd like residents to start uh, coming to get their fob changed out um, starting June 3rd. Uh, and we'll make some space probably in Mark's Hall and um, and uh, put it together an assembly line a la good old Henry Ford. We're and, sending uh, out notifications? Yes, we're we're starting in this, uh, in this Tribune and it will start to be on the uh, website uh, once we get past uh, today, so we can make sure that we have our guest policy in effect. Have we talked about the charges for the guest card yet? Are we there yet? We're, we're there. Okay. We're here. I have a, a question. I can understand the $5 charge. I see some issues with that if people are paying 20 because a lot of people that come down here in Vista and driving, the office closes at 4 o'clock. They want to go to the pool or they want to go to bingo that night and they're going to leave at six o'clock the next morning to drive home. So that means they're not going to get the refund. Means they're not going to get a card either. And they're not, not going, going to get a card. card. Well, it's going to be by check anyway, so they can turn it no, in. No, at no, this. no, no, we'll get a card. I thought no. the refund was by check. No, it's by cash. So yeah. I'm, I guess cash my question is, like why don't we just charge $5 and then they can deposit the card in the uh, security box when they leave in the morning. That's I didn't want to get into writing right. checks or trying to issue money. I mean, you, people are going to leave Sunday and oh, All right. they, 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 my card. they came here visiting someone. Mm -hmm. So my kid comes and they get a guest card. Okay. They leave under those circumstances. They, they're not going to get their $15 back. Guess what? I can give them the $15. And I'll bring their card down and I'll collect the the twenty the fifteen dollar refund, or I'll collect the fifteen dollar refund and I'll mail it up to my that's uh, one two that's one two you know um that, does, not, that doesn't always work either I, uh, I've got a whole family that comes down and then they go home Sunday night and what if somebody's remodeling a place like we've had in the right. past and they bring in that person's card and try to get the money back for it it could just be a random you know what I'm saying you got to take good care of your card. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, the random well, like, person. When I, when I passed that? away and left my fob in my house and somebody's remodeling it and they come down here to try to get the money for that fob. The, the, we're only talking huh? guest cards. I know, but that's but that's the same thing with these guest cards. You're going to end up having uh, uh, four or five guest cards. Somebody might leave you three to come down here and get it for them because they're gone. And so... You're just bringing, you know, like a lot of cards in. I, I, okay, I, I hear where this is going, and I, I'm, I'm okay with that. My, my, my thought process here was to try to get the uh, some incentive to get the cards returned. If I, I can see there's going to be some challenges to that, so why don't we just leave it at five dollars, and how about we give it six months and see how many cards that we have outstanding after six months or nine months or whatever it is. If it's an alarming number. Then we'll revisit this. If it's not, I'm good with just covering our costs. Is that a good uh, workable well, solution? You, you said if it's three dollar cost, charging five, you're still ahead two dollars. So 
Okay. Well, well, and another thing too is they're going to sign a form that they agree to how to use the uh, FOB, how to use the card, right? As a part of them getting the guest card mm -hmm. on that. Correct. If we if we would get their mailing address or their email address, if they didn't turn the card in, we could we could follow up with that because you're going to get a report or have the ability with the new FOB system, which I understand has a lot better reporting than what the old system did, that you could go in weekly, Monday morning, and say, hey, what FOBs were deactivated on guest cards and did they turn their card in? I'm not sure it's worth the effort. Yeah, I don't know. $5. $5. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, Anyways so that's a big issue on, the, on, on not having the card. I mean, we're not paying. I don't think we're probably paying $5 for each card, right? No. We, so, 288 we, 290 Yes. I, I apologize. I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around. We're working on one, two, three, the fourth existing policy down where we're talking about the deposits. Correct. Are, are, did we change our thought process to remove the $20 deposit and only charge $5 for the card? Is that what I just heard? No. Or we're, we we're yeah. saying we're going to keep yes. it the way that it is, $20 with a $5 gift uh, refund. For the discussion, um, I... I um, I think we should uh, amend that and remove the twenty dollar deposit as right. per the uh, recommendation of the board to just charge the five dollars and then uh, see how many are out. And as as uh, as Trustee Smith said, we can certainly send out reminders, um, and if we have time, call people. But um, let's see how it goes. Maybe there'll be more returns than we're. Then we're hoping for, and we'll be good. But for right now, we're just going to charge five dollars, and that will be it. There will be no twenty dollar deposit required. Okay, that that's what I thought I heard. I just wanted to make as sure as long that as that's the will of the board. Yeah. Right, I I understand. Well, I think one of your concerns was not to have a hundred cards uh, out there, but if the card is marked that it deactivates. They can't get it reactivated anywhere, so the five dollars is going to cover our cost, and I don't care if there is an extra card out there. Right? Yeah, it, yeah. Is is, but that that but having an extra guest card out there, may, <laughs> having an extra guest card out there, um, without a reader is what the concern it's is. Still but not working. You're you're not turned on. Yeah, it is. No, you're not. You're no, red. You're red. It should be green. I'm red too. I'm green. No, oh, they I'm green. <laughs> the audience says it's working. You hear me? <laughs> so don't talk. So this will just this is just the importance of having a it's the importance of having a reader um at our events, right. which I, I think we're all recognizing and I think that's important too. So not a problem uh to do that. But yes, I think we're we're making headway. We've got through four, I, mean, I think, all of the issues for guest passes. And again, nothing is written in stone. And if we have to make changes, you know, as we go or along, um, as we uh, as we move along this process, I'm sure that we're, we haven't thought of everything. I have one more. Go ahead. <clears throat> My kids are coming down. They're going to be with us the whole time. Why should I pay $5? No, they're not going to register. What's going to happen? And I, and I'm not so sure that we don't we don't already say that some of our policies that that if they're with a resident, oh, it happens already. I know. Right. Well, if they're with a with a resident, I think their resident is allowed to bring them in. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that's covered already, and I don't think they should be forced to get a guest card if they're not going to be. Basically, what you're saying though is is then I can have a, this guest for 90 days out of the year, just only 30 days they're going to get a pop bob. I, uh, that's what I'm saying is going to happen. And oops. Well, if I go home, well, I'm not sure it's that big of a deal, but it's it's just that's what's going to happen. Right now, it's happening too. So I'm this sure is this is no difference. difference. I have I have a question in a in a slightly different track. If I buy if I pay for the the five dollar guest fob for my son who comes down the end of February, if I just kept that 
guest card. It didn't return it. Can I come back next year and renew it? For five bucks. For five bucks. Okay. I'm just making sure that the world understands just because they've got it, they paid, they paid for it doesn't mean that they can renew it. That no they've got to pay right, they've got to pay the five dollars. We most right. likely give them a new card. Okay. I think the example of the your family coming, oh excuse me. Right. The family coming and not getting the guest card, they're not going to be able to go do bingo because they have to have their own individual guest card. They will not be able to go to the dances or district sponsored events without right. paying the fee because they don't have a guest card. Right. That would be the drawback on that. Yes. I think Lee made a pretty key <clears throat> statement a while ago is you have to decide what you're trying to allow and prevent right. and then write the rules to fit it. Right. And I, to me, I have my personal hot point and I don't know that anything we've said has, has, does anything about it is that is that's Lee. That is somebody's four middle school grandchildren going to the pool by themselves unsupervised. Mm -hmm. right. And I'm not sure if we've done anything that makes that any less likely. Shouldn't they be there with an adult who has a guest card? Shouldn't. They're, they're supposed should. to be, but, but not. Well, that's a different they don't know, and they don't it's know if you can regulate it. And maybe that becomes the answer, but that's that's one of the biggest complaints I hear from residents. It's a good start to regulate change and things like this. I, and and I and I got to tell you that there are times of the year, spring break, when mm -hmm. all of our kids come with our grandkids, mm -hmm. and they, you know, for two or three weeks, they they're at the pool. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of communities that a lot of residents don't even bother going to the pool during those three weeks because <laughs> they don't want to deal with the kids. But it's a fact of life that we can't say no mm -hmm. to having your kids unless we build an adult-only pool, which <laughs> certainly an option. Like I said, you can have anything you want as long as you want to pay for it. <clears throat> but we need to be realistic in what we can enforce and what we can't enforce. And I think you understand that. I understand it, but if I can't enforce it, I want people to quit complaining to me about it. <laughs> good, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I that. think if we charge five dollars for the card, I would personally I would not have a large expectation that I want to return it no. because it's not much of an investment. It's not worth their time. It's not worth the staff's time to pursue that card. It's dead. It's gone. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But they can reuse it. Without the no, deposit, no, it would the be card. turned off. Yeah. They got to pay five dollars to use it over. They, it would be turned off, and yeah, we're yeah. just going to take that old cart. You know, maybe we got off on the wrong track on re renewing it. We're just going to turn, have them turn that cart in. We're going to issue a new cart. Yeah. Well, hopefully, if they decide not to leave the cart, that they'll leave it in the resident, and then the resident will see that, or they'll let them know, and then they can return the cart when they come back. But That's a possibility. They, if they return it, great. If they don't, they yeah, don't. it's not a big issue. It's not worth the time to. Okay. <laughs> I mean, now you know why I wanted to change out with stem microphones. So right, right now we're just dealing with guests, the guest pops. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about the resident cards. Correct. Not yet. Correct. Okay. Well, because it says resident fobs on the bottom of your sheet, and I just want to make sure we weren't addressing that, that yet. We're not, we're not there the yet. Next one. Yep. So we are square on what we're going to do is just charge five bucks. Mm -hmm. And we don't care if the card comes back and it'll be deactivated. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So just to recap this, to make sure that we're all on the same page here, uh, we are going to uh, eliminate the ability for the guest to use a homeowner's or a property owner's FOB. Um, we are going to ask that guests get their own guest card at the office. That will be a all-in-one card that will say guest on it, and that it will have a fob, and it will be uh, active for the dates that the guest is going to be here, uh, as long as it's 30 days or less. Uh, we're going to give one guest card out to up to two adults and children. However, if someone would like an additional guest card, they pay $5, and they may get one. And then the guest uh, the guest card charge is going to be five dollars, no deposit. We all good? Mm -hmm. yep. 
So we can take out that fifteen dollars also. Right? right. Yeah. Right. The rest of that paragraph, just the, the first right. guest card FOB charge five dollars, period. Yep. Right. This will be coming back to you, you know, in the in the appropriate PPs and, and, and changes yeah. in rules and regulation, but we just needed to make sure that we had our charge. When I say charge, I mean our, our direction. Uh, so that we can enact this and make sure we get proper guest cards and quantities and everything else. So we're good. Thank you. <laughs> okay, resident Fobs. Moving on to the next item, uh, correct it. Bear with me here. All right. Uh, we talked about this last time. We, uh, over the years, I'm, and I'm going to go back 50 years, uh, we charged anywhere from $5 to $50 for a uh, property owner or a resident to buy a FOB. Uh, and uh, that, that $50, which is the current charge, is refundable when that person sells their house or moves out. Um, last, last year... We had renters that were that uh, had the same policy. We converted that over to the renters paying fifty dollars uh, for their fob, and then uh, uh, when and they own their fobs, if they re-rent again in the following years, they pay twenty five dollars to have that renewed uh, when they come back. We're asking to do similar things for resident fobs to convert the $50 payment over to, or deposit over to a payment. Uh, however, residents will not be charged any renewal fee every year. And then uh, we will then say that whatever was paid, whether it's $5, $10, $50, that is what uh, was paid for the FOB and there will be no refunds when people move out. And the reasoning behind this is every we, we write checks uh, and we have to then, because we're writing checks, checks cost us a small fortune to write and to track, but we also have to track this uh, in a, what's called a subsidiary ledger uh, with for our audit. And we're keeping money on the books from 50 years ago. And that's just generally considered a no-no. And um, it's it's gotten to the point that, you know, we have a lot of turnover so there's more people coming in and more people leaving and we're writing more checks and we're taking in more money and we have to track all that names. We have to know who, who put that money in uh, what date and what time. So um, we just like to do a one-time uh, thing where whatever monies were paid for their FOB uh, back in the day or, or recently just goes to pay for the FOB and now uh, residents own their FOB. So there's really no difference uh, be, uh, here from for me. So the card is the Bob is going to be the new card, which yep. has embedded their information. So is there a proposed cost for that card? Because it shouldn't be $50 now. It's not this other one that costs an arm and a leg to replace. So is there a recommendation on how much that should be? Well, to purchase a FOB, is fifty dollars? I believe it's mm -hmm. it's uh, it's been going on that way for many many years. Mm -hmm. There's always been a charge for a fob. I understand, but now the fob, our current fob, to replace that fob costs a lot more than it costs to pay replace the card. No, no, no. They're pretty much the same price. Well, yeah, How but they're the, the same card. I mean, they're the same card is what's being used for the renters or for the guests. Correct? I am not following. If you, if you're asking me if this item it costs more than the card they're the same the card the card is going to replace that correct yes okay and the card costs fifty dollars three dollars i'm sorry you paid fifty dollars that you would have got a check back if you no left. that wasn't my question okay, but the, my, the cost the cost of the card right now is how much per card you buy them in bulk and they're programmed or whatever what does it cost for that card? Now? Probably around three dollars. Okay. Why are we charging fifty? Not the cost yeah. of the card is not the only thing. You've got all the time involved, the administrative with, fee with, and everything else. Okay. Office putting in all the information, <clears throat> tracking all the stuff, okay. and all that. So let me go back to the guest card. So if that same card costs fifty dollars to own, oh, I see. What you right. Mean. Why are I we charging them five? 
I see. When we're charging owners 50, it's the same cards, the same systems, the same process, the same staff time, uh, et cetera. So I think there should be an equal amount of cost, whether you know it's owner or renter or a guest, there should be an equal amount, not such a discrepancy. So I, I believe see what you mean. So. I, I, I see where you're going with this, but I don't think it's apples with apples, to be honest with you. I think that a new owner uh, uh, comes in and uh, pays the application fee to be here and then also pays a FOB fee to own to own their FOB. For the guest passes, we're renting them a FOB for 30 days and then they have to give it back. But you're not, we just had this discussion. We don't expect to get them back. Because they're not paying, they're not paying an incentive. People people do things when it's money out of their pocket. They want that money back. Right. Five dollars, they're not going to worry about I, it. I get where you're going. Again, okay. this this is renewed every year on people's birthday. That does not happen with a guest fob. You have staff time involved in this, and you have uh, upkeep of the system. We just paid fifty five to sixty thousand dollars for this system. Correct. There has to be some offsetting costs on this. You are, regardless uh, of of what we think we are, we still need to have revenue centers that help pay for some of these items no, that we spend. I, I understand that. And and the overhead of our staff, and the fact that people have I, I've talked to some people that have lived here for thirty years. Yeah, you're potentially paying for thirty renewals. Thirty renewals, uh, and and. Uh, uh, the only time we're ever going to charge that resident again is if they if they lose that uh, FOB. Right. So the higher cost is helping to offset the cost of the other cards, basically. Correct. It's ownership versus renting. I call it leasing versus buying. What What's the how, how much of the printer? What does the printer consume that prints these FOBs? Is, is it a laser? Uh, it's a uh, a ribbon. It's a heat transfer. Ribbon, they're expensive. They're all ribbon. So we, but, you know, we need to consider that, not mm -hmm. just the cost of the car. Yeah. But again, regardless, you have to look at this as being an ownership, and it's and it's includes renewals and everything else. But also, we're not asking guests to pay the the help us pay the cost of the system and the upkeep. Right. The upkeep yeah. we pay. Right. We also pay every month for the upkeep. Yeah, the this. owners are paying that basically. Sure. So we do have to have some revenue centers where we, you know, we make we make. Uh, uh, just an assessment is not enough, you know, to to maintain the park, you know, budget. There has to be revenues coming in from other sources too. So Lee, we're not going to get that much revenue from it, anyways, because we look at the number of owners that already have their club versus the new people. Well, and you had what, maybe twenty five, thirty new residents this year or more that have bought places in the park so far. So far, yeah. or even long-term renters, that yeah. would be would classify under the resident Bob, correct aspect. So I mean, you're not you're not talking about no, we're not talking about huge money. Take a long time talking. to offset the cost of the Bob system, correct? Mm -hmm. So Lee, if a resident or a renter loses their card, do they pay fifty or twenty-five? If a resident or a renter loses their card, they pay fifty. Okay. So this would hopefully end this I lost my card thing every week. Correct. Very good. <laughs> and Lee, I, um, I understand the multiple names on a guest card. We're not going to do multiple names on a resident card, are we? So um, generally not, but I will tell you that uh we've been there are some husband and wife or significant others that live together that only want one to pay for one uh fob okay and in that case put both names we on would probably one. put both names on it just for there, the sake of id discussion at one time about the picture id being on here that has gone by the wayside so we are not going to put the picture on the actual card but we're going to start out taking picture of the person when they register, they change over to their new ID. So the picture's in the system. Mm. Okay. And so it when may you take do the reader, when you do the reader with that picture yes. pop up, yes. cool. 
Now, uh, and then it it may take us a few cycles to get that picture in there, you know, renewals. But eventually, we hopefully we would get be able to identify. I have another question. If you are on the lease, do you get a card? Yeah. So right, everyone so, that's on the lease, but or you have to pay for it, right? Yeah. But but if there's an LLC, well, well, hold on, lease being a renter. If you're if you're a renter, uh, oh, it's, it's, it's a little bit different. No, I'm yeah. sorry. That's not. I'm sorry. I'm, I misspoke. If you're on the deed, I'm sorry. I yes. used the wrong word. If you're on the yeah. deed, so if 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 twenty people are on the deed, yep, they would all have. They would all be um, able to get a card. Correct. There, there is no there is no um, okay. limit on property owners. It was my understanding our, through their office that only two fobs are allowed. Okay, residents. so let's let's go back to this. So yes, that's correct. We're only allowed to issue up to two farms, but in any name per residence. All right. So I own a place in here, and I'm don't live in the park, but I I have my I have. Well, I'm just telling you, <laughs> you're, you're going to run into. And this is the only place we can talk about. Yes, it happens. And it, I know it happens because I stopped a contractor that does not live in the park. Mm -hmm. Using our fob, using his fob, dumping it in the dumpster. Mm -hmm. I I fully understand this, and 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 I I have a solution to this, but it's not very palatable. Okay, and the solution is is that, for example, and and forgive me because I've already talked about this a few times, but if a person buys a property with the intent to rent it out, okay. And then they, when, when the renter is in that house, the privileges from the owner being able to use the pool, the dumpster, and everything else transfers to the renter. Only. Oh. And this one is disabled because they shouldn't have the ability to if come in from the outside. Right. They don't live That's the way it should be. Well, that, in, in a perfect world, that is the way it should be. That is not the way that we operate. No. Correct. And yeah. and and I will tell you that that again, it's it's just something that you have to decide to do. Um, but yes, there are people that uh, I think that you need to think about this before enacting this or even coming up with it, because of the fact that there's a lot of people that buy places in here just to buy a or just to have a, a marina slip or a storage lot slip. Yes. There's a lot of um, unintended consequences that happen from this. They also go to bingo. And, and, and it also makes life very much harder on the office staff to figure this thing through because a lot of times. But that is, that is the way to stop that. Our current methodology does not allow us to stop that because we allow uh, the owner to have a fob and a renter to have a fob. But that's just the way it is. So I get it, and 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 we deal with this a lot. You know, we see. Uh, I don't think it happens where it it's costing us a lot of money. We're not seeing any major increases in in dumpster pulls or anything else, or you know. But it happens, and I I hear it from many trustees, and I hear it from residents, and I I get it. But again, this is one of those things where the enforcement here may not the the, the juice may not be worth the squeeze. <laughs> A question to confusion with couples. If you have a couple and one of them has a fob and the other one doesn't, on the new system, the person that has a fob will get an ID card with the fob access to it. The other person will get an ID card with no fob access. Is that correct? You no, know, if they're going to buy an ID card or buy a, I, I, since they're, since they're so they all in have, one. The second person would have to buy, pay the 50 bucks for the FOB or whatever we determine. You get, if they want a FOB on their own. Whereas now they're using their spouse's FOB to go to the pool or even if they don't but, go together. That's exactly what we did. We bought two FOBs. Yeah. Well, we moved here. What you're saying is some people don't buy two. Yeah. 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 Some people don't, but that's what it says is the, uh, single family home can 
if that resident wants one, they can buy. What's if you want to go to the pool while your wife's playing bingo, you got to buy two fobs. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. And wait, I think what we wait, said earlier see, is if you have one fob in the household, both names can be on that one fob. Just got to do everything because, together. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's right. or one at a time. Exactly. You know, you I also have to remember too there. There's a lot of people in this park that do not participate. They yeah. do not right. go to the pool. Yeah. They do not go to bingo. However, fobs are going to become more important to people because, for example, the two bathrooms right out here, mm -hmm. they're going to be fob activated. So that will <laughs> stop some of the issues we all know mm -hmm. without talking about. Mm -hmm. But those will be fob activated. So you really need, and, and, uh, regardless of whether you, know, you, you go to bingo, if you want to go potty, you're going to need to carry your fob around from now on at all times. So, and remember too, you know, when uh, it's been about a year since we started to get very uh, adamant about locking the doors and, and requiring fobs to get in the doors of all activities. And, and that's going to stay that way. In fact, it may get tighter, you know, so that you may need, you, you absolutely will need your fob to get in somewhere. We may say, please don't prop those doors open. Well, we say it there. We say that already. Huh? But they still. Uh, I've, um, where's my question going here? Oops. Okay. Are the fobs is the uh, on the ID card? Is the fob code already embedded in the card, or is it put in there when they pay to sign up for the fob, or when they activate their fob? So these right now, as they sit here, are just plain old dumb cards. Once we, once we print the card out and then we swipe it or we, we put it in the reader, that programs it. It's, it, has a, it has something embedded in it, but we, don't, we activate it. Well... So it's there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's a 23 digit number in here, hexadecimal number <laughs> that's in here. And then when we read it, it, then we program it into our system. Better way of putting it. Yeah. Okay. Well, it does it. Ain't I got to be careful well. because Trustee Smith is an old computer guy and I got to make sure. <laughs> <I didn't. laughs> he said old. <laughs> yes, sir. So the, the only change here is that we're converting the fifty dollar uh, fee to a, or excuse me, the fifty dollar deposit to a FOB fee, and that all existing uh, FOB fees that have been paid over the years are just going to be uh, used to pay for the existing FOB that the resident has, and there will be no more refunds. I have two questions. Not sure where in this conversation that fits, but on um, the PP. It says renter leaser. The renter leaser purchase fobs may be reactivated for a twenty-five dollar fee. The owners reactivate their card on an annual basis with no fee. Correct. Correct. If you have a lot, and we have a lot of long-term renters in this park. If you have a long-term, they're not changing people, they're not changing houses or anything like that. Why does the renter have to pay a reactivation fee and not just fall under activation under their birthday? Because they're renters, and they're we require renters. to have a copy of that lease, uh, or at least make sure that they're coming back. But that's that's the rule of a rent uh, for renters. Yep, mm -hmm. they're not owners. They also don't pay the assessment. <clears throat> right, they they pay. You know, they essentially pay yeah. twenty five dollars yeah. for the privilege of using our facilities through the year. Right. Just wanted to raise the issue. Okay. <clears throat> and the other thing, <clears throat> excuse me, on the PP twenty seven A. Uh, this may have been on here before, but um, it taught part A on page one. Actually, it's our rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. It gives examples of district sponsored event. Pickleball, as I understand it, is not a district sponsored event, it's a club event. So, should it not be included in that as an example? All right. Um, may I answer that? This the the rules and regulations the only changes that were made in the 
I'm not following. Well, where where are you seeing that? I'm on um, part, on part A. Part A, page okay. one, and it's in other places too. Oh, Donnie, I I, I can answer that. So this came up in a board meeting, but two years ago, we were asked to put that in there by pickleball. I remember this because they came to they came into us about it because people from the outside, like oh. outside of trailer states, were coming to play pickleball. And I remember that. I don't know why I remember that, but I did. So that's why we put it in there. I'm not well, saying it's right or wrong because it's not really a district event. Okay. So, and that's the point. It's not a, di there's a certain expectation mm -hmm. when there are district events, right, including right. money. Um, and I think that my opinion is it should not be included because we do have other events like Joshua Size. People come in from outside, mm -hmm. you know, hard games that come in from outside. Right. And so if it's a club, we have very clear definitions on what makes a club uh, and what's required. I mm -hmm. would recommend that pickleball, because I think it's in four different places. It refers to pickleball as one of the examples mm -hmm. is removed because they're not a district right. event. They're a club. Right. All right. May, Mr. Chair, may I? Yeah. This does not, I, I, I appreciate where you're coming from, but you would have to put that on a separate PP38 and bring it back to the board okay. for changing. I'll do that. This is this is pertaining to just okay. the just uh, bobs, the bobs, okay. and I, I I apologize, but that's no problem. That's kind of I want to make sure that we keep we we stay on topic. Okay, did we recap that? Good God. <laughs> okay, we're done with the agenda items, right? That covered all of them? I think we have. So let's start off then with the information report from the trustees. Uh, Cindy, do you want to start us off, please? Yeah, I've had uh, not too active the last few weeks. Um, we just have, um, I'm finally getting some resources from Manatee County, which is kind of exciting. They have a falls prevention coalition that actually get will come out and do training to help you with balance and help you with different things that could make you have a safe home to live in. So I think that's something I'm going to set up within the next few weeks for training. Um, it can be as long as two hours or it can be a very short program, but they will have nurses that come in. They will also have somebody to check hearing. Uh, which a few people need, not them looking at you. What? Um, <laughs> but uh, also, uh, there's the blood pressure checks and stuff. Some of our nurses aren't here during the summer. And um, mobility changes to help people get up and out of chairs after they have knee surgeries and stuff. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think it it it's a great thing that Manatee County is reaching out, that we actually have resources we can deal with. And they'll also talk about uh, in-home care. So if, uh, and I never could find anybody except to tell them to call the county. So now we have a resource for in-home care and residential care too. So Great. I think that'd be good. Okay, thank you. Kathy? Go oh. ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Since the last board meeting, we've only had one event. Um, the final dance of the season was held on April 6th. DJ Richie Hodge entertained. And thank you, Dottie, for stepping in for me. I really appreciate that. And thanks to the woodshop for volunteering. The contract cost was $450. At the door, we took in 345, which means we had 46 guests attending. Um, we have we've done 28 events this year from mid-November to the first week in April. I'm really glad it's over. Um, it's a lot of stuff. Um, the uh, the uh, next year's season will is in the April Tribune. There will be some few changes. So I'm not going to say them right now, but a few events are going to be probably changed in some way. Um, and uh, the golf cart poker run is scheduled for February 7th, 2025. Um, we already have five confirmed poker run stops, which is unbelievable. Um, pickleball, bocce, um, shuffleboard, and then we have two resident 
groups who want to do it. So we only we only had seven stops last year. Now that may change depending upon what, what the committee wants to do. But if you're interested in doing a golf cart poker run stuff, please get a hold of me right away. It's kind of important. We start meeting in, in October, believe it or not. I want to thanks to everybody who helped me out this year. Your help was more than appreciated. And a special thanks to all the maintenance guys for putting up with me and all the setups and takedowns and all the work that we had to do. So thank you all. Great. Thank you. Todd? All right. Working on a few projects around the park. Um, still working on the lift to get in the pool. Um, hope to have that up and running by July 3rd, The uh, whenever the fobs get activated. That'll it's be the last. June. 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 I'm June. sorry. I did say July. Yeah, June 3rd. Uh, the last part of that will be getting the, the motor installed in the gate and then getting the, the actual fob put in. And I haven't got confirmation from Big Fish that that'll happen, but I believe it will. Uh, they're finishing up the deck boards down at the deck. They've got just a couple boards to put on yet, and that'll be all complete. And uh, since of all, all of our friends, or most of our friends are heading back north, the guys are going to be getting caught up on all of their, or starting their summer activities, getting the floors all cleaned and scrubbed and stripped and rewaxed back to their, their normal duties. Then the move on the, uh, the maintenance building, they're working on that. Dumpsters down there. It's not an extra dumpster for anybody to throw their stuff <laughs> in. Got signs on it. It's, it. Please don't throw your stuff in it. We need that for the maintenance department. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Those? Um, currently, uh, biggest task is completing the uh, mailing of notice on the budget to the residents, mm -hmm. which is a big mer mail merge project. And an interesting side note to that is I spoke with uh, the appraiser's office yesterday because every time we do one of these mail merges that has to do with the, the assessment, we have to combine files that we keep in the park with the tax roll because that's where the most current addresses are. And one of the key issues is how many lots are in each parcel. And they have a column for that, and the data is not correct in it. So I haven't been able to use it. And I uh, spoke with uh, my new best buddy, Paul, Paul uh, Wills, at the appraiser's office and said, what does it take to make that data right? I mean, I can give it to you if you want to put it in. And it would save quite a bit of hassle in the mail merge. So that's what we're working on this week. Okay. Dottie? Oh, I thought you, oh. <laughs> you tricked you me. You never know where I'll go. <laughs> okay. Uh, just a reminder that we have potluck tonight at, at uh, 5 o'clock. And we have a uh, coffee break on Saturday at 9 o'clock. I passed out to the trustees. The, basically, it's a copy of what I put on the Tribune. And I have a schedule of events throughout the summer through December, and uh, different, some of them are different. On Mother's Day, we're going to have a Mother's Day ice cream social and sunset with music. It's going to be at the pavilion. Um, I'm asking the staff to remove all of, the, it's going to be fancy. Um, mothers in, are entitled to that. <laughs> and so uh, we're going to have the picnic tables removed, and we're going to bring um the round tables in, and they're going to be decorated nicely, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So that's going to be at six o'clock. We're going to continue the monthly potluck. I think it's important still to have the potluck and have people bring food that they enjoy making and gather and have the opportunity to do that. Of course, bingo continues. We're going to have a Mother's Day event. We're also going to have a Father's Day event. We're going to have a Father's Day barbecue, and it's going to be a Mission Barbecue. It's going to come in. And so we're going to have that in the afternoon. More information will be coming out. And um, I, I didn't know how to, okay, so Mother's Day is for the mothers. And so we're going to have a limited space. So I've decided that the men are welcome to come, but they're going to pay $5. The women are free. On Father's Day, the women are welcome to come, but they're going to pay $5. So the men get is, is toward the men, toward the women. I didn't know how else to kind of restrict that, but yet encourage them at the same time. But we'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, we are going to plan to in July to have a movie, afternoon at the movie. They actually have groups that can go to the movie theater. I haven't picked a date. The hardest thing might be to pick the movie um, more than anything. Uh, karaoke, at the, these are some ideas, uh, some things I have on the list. Karaoke at the beach in August. Uh, you have a poker run golf cart. I'm going to have a 
a golf cart scavenger hunt. Um, and so that's going to be in the works. In October, plan to have a Halloween Monster Mash costume dance. That's going to be the only big dance because um, Kathy does such a great job at it. I, I'm excited about it. I already have a costume. I got someone <laughs> to do my makeup, you know, mm -hmm. and I don't do that kind of stuff on a regular basis. <laughs> that should be a lot of fun. And we are going to have a Thanksgiving dinner on Thanksgiving Day. And, um, and then in December, the, the coffee break at 9 o'clock will continue. So this will be posted on the bulletin board. And it'll be in, it's in the Tribune, and it'll be on Facebook and the, our normal, well, as I can on Facebook anyway. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Ron? I have nothing to report. Perfect. I'll let Russell speak for it. <laughs> Russell? <laughs> Uh, if everybody wants to figure out and see how nice it is to be a public relations person, I don't have anything to say either. But in the May, in the May Tribune, there's a lot of information written up and on the website. If anybody would like to look and see what's happening with public relations, it's all out there for you. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I was waiting to hear. All right. Uh, I'm current with reservations. Please check the website calendar uh, right away to ensure there's no errors were made. And then check it again the week prior to ensure no changes had to be made. And again, please, folks, do not arrive for an event even a few minutes prior to the re reservation start time, which appears at the far left of the online calendar display. The event start time is, the, is in the function title. Early arrivals may disrupt functions, and late leaving may adversely affect the next function. Please re be respectful of reservations. Um, I still don't have a reservation for Masonic Square Club. Um, that's the only one that's still outstanding. And then um, <laughs> I'm saddened and I'm disappointed by the information that I'm hearing from residents in the perception that we are not a board of nine and decisions are made by a select few. In the recent past, we have allowed trustees' ideas to get shut down without any discussion. We need to stop this. If I don't agree, I need to be given the opportunity to hear and then possibly be swayed. I fully understand not having trustees respond to public comment in the workshop since all topics of public comment are restricted to that meeting's topic. Publicly, publicly Explaining this recent change might have helped with this perception. Lee Atwater stated this succinctly in as perception is reality. Let's strive to make the perceptions we have some control over be our best. That's all I have. Great. Thank you. I have nothing. Mr. Morris? <laughs> if I can stop choking. <laughs> Excuse me, everybody. Um, I only have a couple of things. The uh, Red Cross is this Saturday for a smoke detector installation from 9 to 2. Uh, right now, we don't have a, a meeting area. Sorry. That's okay. Um, we're going to work on that. Uh, most likely, uh, as soon as I hear from the secretary. Or May I? Go ahead. Do, can I play with my phone while he's talking? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Excuse me. So that's from nine to two. Please make sure that if you signed up for smoke detector installation, that you are home during those times. And then also uh, to piggyback on the treasurer, watch for budget and balance sheet letters. There will also be the opt-in uh, letter going out with that mailing, and it should be out sometime this week. That is it. I thought it was 10 to two on my note. Sorry. 10 to two on the note I have for the for the smoke alarms. I believe nine to two is the uh, gathering time and 10 to two is the actual install yeah. time. So we have to be at our properties from 10 to, 10 two. to two. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. And it's this Saturday? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. The coffee, it makes it a little bit more uh, challenging. Um, Lee, aerobics is in here until 9.15, but then you could have this space. So my, my thought is, is that we would meet in the courtyard uh, right uh, at the front of the large hall, okay. and then we'd move into here afterwards. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That. So that that's that's the game plan. Thank yes. you for letting me okay. use my phone. Because yeah, they have you still need a few uh, volunteers, donuts, and coffee, and all that stuff. Then they thank you. Took off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
Did they we did all the registration and everything. We still need um we were I, I believe there's five teams. There's lesser less teams this year. So we're looking for five uh volunteers that have a four person golf cart to take the installers around uh to the homes. Yeah. So okay, they me. start yeah. congregating at nine o'clock. Yes. Or they start congregating at eight forty five so that they're ready to start at nine o'clock. No, they're never they they're they're never on time. Yeah. They're usually take about I'm gonna say forty five minutes, an hour to mobilize ish. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm I'm just trying to understand. Do you want me to contact um, Kathy Matthews and ask her if she can end aerobics fifteen minutes early so you can get in here at nine o'clock? Not 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 no, necessary. Not necessary. Okay. All right. That's all. I, it's all I was after. Okay. Anything else? All right. The violation report. Anything? Uh, this is the second week or the second meeting this month, so there is no violation report. And I don't think we have any unfinished, unfinished business. So with that, I'll adjourn the workshop at 11.10. And I'd like to take a 10-minute break, please, to recess. Do you think you're going to need this again later? No, I don't think.
Okay, you ready? Okay, I'd like to call to order the regular board meeting uh, for April 16th, at, uh, 2024 at uh, 1121 here in Marks Hall. Uh, could we have the roll call again, please? Sure, we'll here. Not Thank you, Ron. Thank you. All right, Lori Dalton here, Dottie Deerwester. Present. Kathy Gregory. Present. Todd Lombardi. Present. Russell McAllister. Present. Louie Nichols. Present. Cindy O'Brien. Present. Rod Smith. Present. Dwayne Trotter. Present. Lee Morris. Present. Okay, with that, I'd like to have public comment. And that conclude any include any comment, please, or any topic. <clears throat> Again, three minutes, and please state your name and address. Lenore Neal, 6619 California Street. Uh, I spoke to Lee a few minutes ago, but I was thinking when you were talking about these guest passes, I have to get the guest pass. I am the resident. I am responsible for my guests. So if I go and get a guest pass and the kids leave and I don't return that card, if you want to do something, find me. Mm -hmm. Make it a $25 fine if you don't return the card or $20 or whatever. But don't punish everyone. I know you've decided to do the $5, but we don't want to punish everybody for a few. And if, I don't, if I'm not responsible enough to do what I'm supposed to do, then I'm the one that's in trouble, not the rest of the park or not the rest of the people. I just think we have to keep an eye on some of these rules and things that we make that we're not punishing everyone for the acts of a few and try to figure out how to stop the acts of the few. Great, thank you. Anybody else in the audience, please? Do I have anybody on Zoom? Hearing none, I'll close uh, public comment. We'll move into the approval of the minutes. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes of the April 2nd, 2024 <clears throat> board meeting workshop? So move. Do I have a second? Second. Are there any corrections to those minutes? I didn't receive any emails to that effect. Great, thank you. Uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes as written, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. <laughs> the motion is passed. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the April 2nd, 2024 regular board meeting? So move. Is there a second? Second. Are there any corrections to those minutes? I didn't receive any email to that effect. Great. All those in favor of approving the minutes as written, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion is passed. Uh, could we have the treasurer report, please? Yes, sir. Current balance in the region's uh, business checking account, $75,045.21. Balance in the region's money market account, $2,061,159.18. And within that is the seawall loan balance of $176,129.53. The uh, funds from the uh, Trailer States Fire Control District, $271,350.20. Special Assessment Fund, $26,358.77. Then the remaining uh, balance of our operating and um, reserves, $1,587,320.68. Okay, is there a motion to approve the Treasurer's report? I moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the treasurer's report is read. Please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The report is approved. Uh, do we have any bills? Yes, but I don't have it in front of me. <laughs> Did you know how much the invoice was from... Uh, um, Model, Model and Jenkins? Yeah, No. Uh, the attorneys? Yes. It was below the threshold. It was eighteen hundred dollars. Oh, okay. All right. So uh, it's not. So we don't have right. any. So right. no bills. No bills. 
Okay, uh, dumping into the uh, agenda items, the first one we had was the reward to PP3, and I'd like to make a motion to rewrite PP3 as discussed in the workshop, and I probably should amend that to say today's workshop, but the, the, no, no, wor no worries. I think we'll be okay, yeah. Okay. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the motion as read, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion is passed. Uh, the second item we had was the yes pass uh, procedure update. Uh, Mr. Morris. Um, Mr. Chair, if you would read that on my behalf. Please. Okay. Uh, I make a motion to update the guest pass procedures to start start of the new FOB system by modifying rules and regulation part A, PP27A, and PP30 as discussed in the workshop. I'll second that. Can I ask that we amend that? Because we didn't identify and we're, we're not entirely positive that that's all the places that that hits. We want to... Um, we want to vote on the gist of the procedure, which is what was passed out and what we discussed in the in the meeting, and then the actual documents will come back at a future future uh, meeting. Do we need to identify that, or identifying at least the three documents that we know are needed to be updated is good enough, Mr. Chair? I, I believe that uh, this was our intent was to uh, to bring these back, and I believe that for right now, they're just the ones that are identified in the uh, in the uh, motion. Mm -hmm. And then, if we were to find any other ones, we would also bring them at that same time. As another PP thirty eight. As a PP thirty eight, uh, the the idea was is that we needed to stay on the uh, on track. Uh, to uh, do the FOB changeover and have the gist of how the guest policy and procedure is going to work. I asked the secretary's indulgence to, uh, if she would allow the motion to go through so that we had direction, and then we would revisit everything back and bring the actual documents changed back to the board at a later date. What is that? So basically, you're saying table the motion? No, 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 no. no. Handling, I'm just going to leave the motion, you know, ask for an indulgence to leave the motion as read. Yep. Right. And, and then yep. bring it back. And if there's it. additional. But I'm assuring you that we will bring back yeah. the, the actual documents with changes for your perusal. Any further discussion? All those in favor of approving the motion as read, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion is passed. Next item we have is the resident ID cards and FOBs. Uh, I'll make the motion to update the resident ID cards and FOB procedures 27A to remove the word refundable. Any FOB deposits made by a resident in the past will now pay in full for the new FOB and future renewals. FOB deposits will be uh, converted on June 3rd, 2024. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the motion as read, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. I apologize. I do have a, a tiny bit of discussion. Because this is 27A and I'm going to be fixing 27A from the motion above, um, you're not going to see this new 27A until I get the other stuff up in item two done as well. Just giving you guys a heads up. Correct. I'm not going to yeah. do it twice. Correct. Thank you. Okay, the last item we had was approve a boat lift for 6925 Tarpon Lane. Mr. Smith? Um, I move that we approve the paperwork to install a boat lift at 6925 Tarpon Lane, pursuant to the county issuing a permit. Do I have a second? I'll second that. <clears throat> Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the motion of red, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion is passed.
Do we have any final uh, trustee comments? We go to once a month after this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't think we have any unfinished unfis business. And with that, I will adjourn the meeting at 1131. Thank you very much for attending and please turn off your microphones. Oh, it's too